In the olden days, we had buttons. Lots of it. You pressed it, it completed a circuit and activated something. Now everything is moving to touch. Your phone, your thermostat, your wine bottle? The battery died, um, I need to charge my wine bottle. So how do these things work? Well, today we're going to be covering two different touchscreen technologies. Capacitive and resistive. We're going to look into how these two technologies work and how they differ. So let's get started. Resistive touchscreens was invented by George Samuel Hurst in the 1975. It involved a top layer of plastic in which the underside had a conductive resistive coating, which is basically a resistant network across the screen, that's the name, and then another layer underneath which has also another resistive coating. There is a gap in between these two layers which are usually filled with tiny supporters called spacers to prevent the two from touching each other accidentally, and one layer is used to measure the x-coordinate and the other to measure the y-coordinate. Without touching the screen, a constant voltage is sent from one side of the layer to the opposite side. In this case, let's assume the top layer does this and it handles the y-coordinate. Only one of these layers can be sending voltage for this to work by the way. When you touch the screen, the two conductive surfaces touch each other, creating a voltage divider and the current is sent from one layer to another layer from which it touches a sensor which gets the voltage reading and reports it to the computer chip inside. Once it gets the reading, it immediately switches roles so that the layer that was reading is now sending and the layer that was sending is now receiving. Once this cycle completes, you have the X and Y coordinate which is what the computer needs to know where you are touching. Now, there are different types of resistive touchscreens. I am just talking about the 4-wire configuration. There are 5-wire and 6-wire configurations that are a lot more complicated than what I just explained. And if you want to know more about them, I have linked below some really good articles from Texas Instruments which detail on how they work, uh, which I unfortunately cannot cover here due to time. Resistive touchscreens have a number of benefits. It's designed in a way that any object, be it a fingernail, pen, gloves, all these objects can interact with the screen. It is also quite precise and it doesn't cost much to produce. Thus, you can usually find these screens uh, quite commonly in industrial machines, kiosks, in malls, where workers and shoppers respectively can use gloves or whatever to interact with the screen. Plus, you can find it in cheap game consoles such as the Nintendo DS, old PDAs where price and precision with a stylus is a requirement. But that being said, they do have quite a few flaws. Because of the flexible plastic required, the screen can scratch rather easily. And plastic tends to reflect light very easily. And because of that, using these devices in bright sunlight is a hassle. Resistive touchscreens dominated back then. But a new champion came to the table. The capacitive touchscreen. Capacitive touchscreens were invented by E.A. Johnson, actually earlier than resistive touchscreens in 1965. However, unlike the resistive touchscreen, the capacitive touchscreen did not require any pressure to activate. Instead, it uses electric fields to recognize input. The top of the screen is glazed with a conductive layer, and on it is an electric field. When your finger touches the screen, some electrons travel onto your skin as a result of contact. Sensors then detect the decrease in electrons and then triangulate the location of your touch point. This technology is used in the majority of smartphones today, and it is the reason why you most likely can't touch your smartphone's touchscreen with a fingernail or with a glove as the electrons can't flow in between the two surfaces. Now in terms of the construction of a capacitive screen, it varies. Some just have sensors slash electric field generators on the edges of the screen. However, on most smartphones today, they have the generator and the sensor on a large grid behind the glass in order to achieve maximum accuracy and support for multiple fingers. There are many benefits of using a capacitive screen, one of them being miniaturization. As you don't need to have an air insulator uh, between the panel and the glass like the resistive touchscreen, touchscreen makers can bring the two panels closer together and thus make the screen look clearer and pop up more as it's closer to the glass. Also with the use of glass, the screen can be more scratch resistant and glare be reduced in the process. You can have multi-touch technology rather cheaply and the response 
response time of capacitive touchscreens tends to be better than resistive. Because of that, it's used in many many smartphones and personal digital devices today. Now these aren't the only types of touchscreen technologies out there. There are touchscreen technologies like IR that I couldn't cover in this video. Also there are many new technologies that further improve on the resistive and capacitive touchscreen. For example, now you can use capacitive touchscreens with gloves and pens, but that's for another time. So thank you guys so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something out of it, and if you want to learn more, I have a lot of links that I put in the description so you can go and research more. And yeah, that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye!